Hey guys, welcome to the Gear Locker. Today, we're taking a look at some of the gear and equipment used by the People's Army of Vietnam during the Vietnam War with the United States. Most of this falls under the mid to late war period, though similar gear had been used throughout the entirety of the conflict. First, I'd like to thank my partner in making this video, Johnny Bullfrog. And in addition to the gear we've compiled here, we would like to thank Callum, Jay, and members of the Bay community for their help with photographic evidence of certified Pavan items, as well as reputable information. Let's begin with the uniforms. With the best information we have, the green uniforms, while they were implemented as early as 1965 alongside the Chinese military, they never fully replaced the khaki uniforms. While green was practically fully implemented by the final years of the war, brown and khaki uniforms were in use for the majority of the conflict. We can assume there was a greater uniformity as time went on and less reliance on Chinese supply. Also keep in mind, there is no single cut of uniform used by the Pavan. Factories only had ideas and examples to go off of, and square-cut uniforms simplified the process. Due to the multitude of manufacturers and lack of consistency or quality control, details and cuts on uniforms between the many batches were rarely identical. Jungle workshops and individual regiment sewing units added even more variety to the mix. Most were supposed to be made of a cotton twill, though sometimes poplin was used. Modern reproductions of khaki pavan uniforms are produced by a couple of manufacturers. Here, we have an example from Squadron Sew Shop. The other is a modern Vietnamese-made reproduction. If you're looking for a green uniform, keep in mind that shades vary drastically and reproductions made with nylon materials are not correct. The issued uniform belt was a faux leather silver buckle roller style belt. This was later seen in brown canvas. The equipment belt was the canvas type 65 belt also with a silver buckle. Again, there were plenty of variations, homemade solutions, and even captured US M56 belts seen in use. The soft cover, boonie hat, or duckweed hat, roughly translated to a wide brim hat, is an official part of the uniform designed in 1959. They have a layer of nylon on the inside to keep the wearer dry, as well as three vent holes, though variations are seen. The footwear includes PLA Type 65 high top boots, colloquially known as liberation shoes. There were plenty of variants, though to our knowledge, the North Vietnamese did not produce their own and mostly imported from China. It's important to keep in mind that rubber sandals or wearing no shoes was commonplace as well. However, later in the war, captured Arvin boots began popping up as the NVA invaded the South. According to one of our sources, the black deep tread soles are confirmed correct for the Vietnam conflict. The warming vest was an issued item filled with cotton, duck feathers, or bark if shortages occurred. These were often used in the highlands or colder climates as needed and came in various colors. They can be found as reproductions or original. Now let's move on to the gear. We'll start from top and work our way down. The helmet is commonly known as the pith due to its similarity in design to the European pith, though to the Vietnamese it is more correctly known as the sedge hat or brush hat. Prior to the war, during the Viet Minh era, helmets were made in the pith style, mostly of woven wicker or bamboo. These were often covered with waterproof material, parachute fabric, or tan cotton. The Vietnamese made their sedge helmets with pressed cardboard, soaking it into a pith-like shape. Chinese-made sedge helmets were made with plastic. Various methods of camouflaging these helmets were seen, including parachute fabric, nets, and rope, which foliage was typically affixed to. U.S. parachute material was somewhat common and often used to camouflage the helmets and soldiers in various ways. These cardboard helmets were issued with the Gold Star Badge of Vietnam on the front, though this was often removed for camouflage purposes to the best of our knowledge, since in a lot of pictures, they are not present. As the conflict continued, these helmets turned to a greenish color, roughly around the time of the changes in uniform color. Here is an example of an original wartime one. These reenactment helmets are post-war productions, but outfitted with tan covers and field-made nets for scrim and camouflage. Many of the green pith helmets seen readily available online, known in reenacting circles as tourist piths, are decent options for use in the field, where one would not want to risk damaging an original piece. 
These can easily be made to look more accurate by use of covers and nets. However, be very careful about what you buy online. Many of the pith helmet accessories cheaply available are either entirely incorrect or purely fantasy items, often consisting of thick fabric netting and brightly colored scrim of various shapes and sizes. If you are going to use any sort of netting or cover your pith, the most accurate way of acquiring one is simply making one yourself out of available and realistic material for that time, as this is what soldiers would have done anyway. A neat thing to see is a glow-in-the-dark block for easy identification, as can be seen here. The Chest Rig Synonymous with the Vietnam conflict is the Type 56 Chest Rig, which is a Chinese-made three-cell, four-pocket rig. Variants we have available are all in tan or brown, though colors were really all over the place. Shades of green, brown, and tan were seen wartime, and this was mainly due to the differences in manufacturing from factory to factory. It's important to understand that the vast majority of these colors are correct for Vietnam. A lot of rigs came with a Chinese manufacturer stamp on the back that oftentimes denotes the year of production if you want to be certain that your rig is era correct. Here are pictures on how to decipher the stamp. The main differences between rigs is hardware, as this changed as years went on and the rig evolved. Even though some of these are the exact same date, there are still differences in production. Check out some of the photos on screen, which showcases some of the different hardware seen on variants. One variant which is easily identifiable as incorrect is the PLA Type 81, which has four pockets on the front. This was a Chinese army rig, though developed in 1981 and is completely incorrect for the Vietnam era. In terms of carrying other ammunition, there are numerous different ways to carry grenades that were seen during the war, from Chinese and Vietnamese factory-made versions to jungle-made grenade bags. Take a look at some of these photos. Sometimes, it's as easy as a two-pocket pouch attached to the belt or worn over the shoulder, though modified or custom methods were just as common. Water and Sustainment while there are various ways to carry water throughout the war, the Type 65 canteen is the most common container of choice for mid to late war. If you're lucky, you'll see a plastic version of this. However, the standard metal canteen was issued with a shoulder carrying strap connected to a yoke around the canteen. When not worn over the shoulder, a belt pouch could have been used, especially later in the war as they became more available. Captured GI canteens, as well as Soviet-made, also popped up throughout the conflict, mainly with irregular forces. However, for the NVA, Chinese-made canteens were the norm. Mess kits varied as well, although oftentimes it was a simple enamel bowl and basic eating utensils. However, French and Soviet-style mess kits were used. The primary sleep system of the NVA throughout the war was a hammock. They came in many materials such as nylon, cotton, and canvas, and typically were seen in brown, tan, or green. This, when paired with the issued rubberized tarp overhead, made for a relatively comfortable shelter, as seen in this photo from the Ho Chi Minh Museum. Sometimes, a rubber ground sheet or different blankets were used for spending the night on the ground. For reenacting purposes, the plosh palatkas is a solid option. While there isn't any accurate evidence that the plush was used in Vietnam by Vietnamese forces, it is believable and not far from realistic as it is an Eastern Bloc item and simple in design. Issued rain gear included the sheet of plastic used as a cape. Oftentimes, it was clear, green, or even pink. Pavin rations were typically light. Often rice and meat and vegetables were wrapped in banana leaves for preservation. Rice tubes like these were common ways to carry rations and raw rice. The Pavin used a few different versions of rucksacks, most with three, but some with fewer outermost pockets. Closures for the wartime rucksacks pockets were typically tie-downs, with some Chinese-made examples having a single buckle in the center. The large map pocket on the back was sometimes not present, though when it was, it was likely not rubberized, as seen commonly in post-war examples. Similar to other equipment, there is no definitive pattern used throughout the stages of the war. Keep in mind that these can also vary in color, as production wasn't consistent. And if you're feeling adventurous, a US sandbag can take the place of a rucksack, as well as various homemade bags. 
Sometimes, homemade camouflage net rings, such as these pictured, were used to attach foliage to the rucksack. These were typically wood, bamboo, or even wire and draped over the rear of the pack. The rifle. The milled receiver Type 56 AK directly from China was the primary rifle issued throughout the early and mid-war. Rifles such as the SKS were also commonly seen with Pavan forces, though some rare rifles snuck into photos all throughout the conflict, especially later on. These include, but are not limited to, the Soviet Type 2s and 3s, stamped Chinese Type 56s, Romanian PM MD 65s, and the Hungarian AMD 65. Thank you to Real Fake Guns for compiling evidence of all of these rifles. Some specialized weapons include the RPD, K50M, PPSH, and many captured weapons. Extras. Here are some extras to fill out an impression. Flashlights, while not standardized, can be captured angle heads, European box styles, and homemade lights, lanterns, and candles. Chinese Army and other Eastern Bloc shovels are a great addition. Handheld and pocket knives, medical accoutrements, and other small bits make great additions to a kit. How do you find this stuff though? While it can be challenging to put together a foreign uniform, there's a strong community behind all of this. You can often find great deals on equipment on Facebook, from overseas sellers, and even eBay. Here pictured though is a collection of incorrect gear. Please be weary, especially on eBay. Some commonly purchased incorrect items include helmet covers, rice hats, cheaply made rucksacks, type 87 canteens, and more. Naturally, there's an incredible amount of equipment that is either hotly debated or not deeply known about. If you have questions, reach out to established communities such as the Bay Pavan community, myself or Johnny Bullfrog, and other reputable Pavan reenactors. Thank you all for watching, thank Uncle Ho when you get a chance, and we'll see you guys in the next one.